All right, guys, so we talk about phenomenistic or reinforcement theory now. So you have an idea of how, or an idea of the context behind this. You have to go back to 1960. There was Joseph Clapper, a professor, I believe, I believe it was at Princeton or Columbia. I think it's Columbia. Okay, so yeah, Columbia, where he ends up um, talking about the power of media or the influence of media, better yet. And he ends up taking a different position compared to how society was looking at media if you go back to the 1950s. In the 1950s, of course, one of the main political uh, players in United States uh, politics happened to Joseph McCarthy. We all know everything with McCarthyism and what he was looking at, the Red Scare and everything that, it's go that happened during that time in the United States. Uh, For McCarthy, one of the biggest opponents that he had to deal with happened to be media, happened to be the press, happened to be Hollywood. So much so that, that he, a lot of times, would say Hollywood um, is a threat because most of the people that run studios and, and basically are the individuals that are the power players in that industry, in the movie industry, happen to be communist. At least that's what, what, what McCarthy would always say. Um, when it comes to the, this this style this style of thinking, you know, Clapper decides to go in the opposite direction, trying to minimize or take away that supposed power that media had in the 1950s and then in the 1960s. He he talks about how media are, are very limited in terms of of their power and, and, and what they can wield. Uh, he talks about mass communication ordinarily doesn't serve as as a necessary or sufficient cause. Uh, to raise an effect from an audience. It serves in its major function is, is the nexus of mediating factors and influences. It's the nexus of mediating factors and influences. It's trying to give influence to certain things. It's also part of, hey, you know, this is how it is and kind of looking to sway you in one direction or the other, but it doesn't have the power to change things. Uh, How is media a contributor to certain aspects of, of, of society? That ends up also being a major factor in terms of, of looking at this. But but it's it's also media in relation to media in relation to religion, media in relation to families, media in relation to to many other entities of society that we've had in the past that might have been stronger during that time compared to now. But there is there there is that influence that, that is is being, I guess, established. When you start looking at at, at this at this uh, theory, uh, it's looking to reinforce. Therefore, of course, obviously, reinforcement theory. It's not looking to change. It's not looking to change anything. It's, it's looking to reinforce narrative. And when I say that, how they related to family, when they related to religion, how do they reinforce the narratives? Like I said, they're not willing to change. They're not looking to change anything. They're just looking to reinforce a lot of the things that happened. That's basically what, 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 um, what uh, Clapper is, is talking about. It convinces, with an impressive amount of research, a lot of it is due to polls that are being used. Polls are used a great deal in order to say, hey, by the way, 70% of, of people believe that families should be like this. And 95% uh, of people believe that love is this. Things of that nature. It persuasively refutes lingering mass society and propaganda notions. So it's not propagandistic. It, it ends up being... Uh, something that does question propaganda, but it also um, doesn't really look at how society as a whole ends up really reacting because the research that they have based on the polls, well, it could be something else. Maybe it's 10 people, 15 people that they talk to. And based on those 10, 15 people, that's what they end up uh, trying to sell as a narrative instead of seeing how, how, how parts of society actually do care about certain things. That's where you start looking. It, it overstates influences as mediating factors. 
you can also even say that it's very, sometimes maybe a little too accepting of the status quo. There, there's very little questioning in terms of what changes need to be made in society. Saying, well, you know, as I said before, you know, the relationship that that this this line of thinking has with things like religion, like um, the institution of marriage, the institution of family, and, and uh, maybe it also still has a lot to that one compared to the other one. Maybe has to do I mean, with the previous uh, concept, with the previous theory. Maybe it's not so related to nineteen forties. This one is very related to nineteen sixties, and therefore, it ends up being a major turning point. And when you start going back into the later sixties, when there is a great deal of questioning of media, when there is a great deal of questioning of the government and what they're doing in places like Vietnam, and also the civil rights movement, and all these types of things that end up being questioned. And television really not getting too much into it, or at least some aspects of television, because there was talk, there were talk shows that would delve into the topic of racism. Not very many, but some ended up making some very powerful television to this day. And I'll put one of the, uh, I'll put an example of a few uh, up in, in this lecture, so you have an idea of um, how and there was one with James Baldwin and how he's talking about racism and, and things of that nature. So. It's not fully one thing, but it's also something that has to do a lot with the other. So there you go with phenomenistic theory.